Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Red Raptor Writes. Today I have something special here. So, uh, one of my most popular videos, I think it is my most viewed video, is my Jurassic Fight Club rant, which is really where I first started talking about dinosaur documentaries. And then also what did well was my Nano Tyrannus steamed hams meme from that video. But I wanted to talk in particular about the worst episode in this series. Now Jurassic Fight Club is at this point just an infamous uh, paleo documentary that's been crapped on time and time again. Uh, I, I <laughs> and well so, for good reason. It is infamous for having many bad tropes, being too awesome bro, like having just dinosaurs roaring and fighting and bloodthirsty monsters and killing machines. And, but it's a documentary that I grew up with, so I kind of have this love-hate relationship, which <laughs> um, stinks for me because I grew up with it. It really increased my passion for dinosaurs and paleontology. But then everything I was fed has been pure trash. So then I go back to revisit it and oh my gosh, this is pure trash. But uh, I wanted to go back and look at this worst episode. So this is episode 6, Hunter Becomes Hunted. Uh, it deals with Ceratosaurus fighting Allosaurus. In my original rant from years back, uh, you know, I gave a general overview of the series, but I never delved, dived into each episode specifically in all that much detail, but I want to do that here. Now, there are already some good series that do this and break each episode down bit by bit as to what was accurate, what was not accurate, how it can be improved. Um, Paleo Nerd was one of my big inspirations in this channel, and he did a great breakdown of every episode. And I encourage you to watch it if you haven't already. But I wanted to talk about this episode here. Now, I want to do more of a reaction video like I've been doing for Dead Sounds Dinosauria. Um, it's easier to do, right? Um, it doesn't take as much scripting, as much editing, as those other videos. So since I'm teaching and I'm very busy, I have a lot on my plate, it's Thanksgiving week now. Uh, it's just easier to get this format of video out right now. But when I have free time, um, I've recorded the next part of the Land Before Time review and I'm editing that. I'll keep reviewing the Dead Sound Dinosauria series, but let's begin. And uh, it instantly starts off with a warning that yes, uh, these episodes do get a little violent. My content, I usually like to think of it as a light PG-13, so if you have little kids around, this may not be the most appropriate thing for them. Also, I tend to make uh, jokes and comments that are a little bit, uh, not too far, but just a little bit, uh, dank. <laughs> so, I don't recommend that kids watch the channel. He sat atop the and there we have Ceratosaurus. Dinosaur pyramid, like a sovereign on a throne. Ceratosaurus. Um, let me start off here. <laughs> We're in the Morris information about 150-ish million years ago in the late Jurassic of North America. And we're already getting to some big inaccuracies here, but uh, also I want to point out that, like always, I'll be stopping it continually and skipping some parts, so you should go... S well, I don't really recommend it seeing it for yourself, but if you want to see the full context, you can watch the episode. I'm just doing this to avoid copyright claims. For 20 million years, he was the unchallenged super predator. Yeah, so that's already the first mistake in this documentary. We are 30 seconds in. 30 seconds in, we're already hitting some big uh, red flags here. Fastest man alive. Which might explain why you can't get a date. Yeah. Hey! Uh, so Asgore's was not the apex predator for 20 million years before this. Okay, according to Wikipedia, it lived from 153 to 148 million years ago. And Wikipedia, although not the best source on everything, usually gives good time estimates. So that's 5 million years. Uh, that's four times less than the documentary claims. Yeah, um, it was not ruling. That would be 170-ish million years. It did not live that long, like in the middle of the Jurassic. 
Also, you had Torvosaurus around at that time. Well, not 170 million years ago, but you had like stuff like Torvosaurus and Allosaurus emerging at the same time as Ceratosaurus, so it was never the top predator. But now, new science suggests this monster fought his own battle royale against an interloper Wait, more than- Wait, we're playing Fortnite? Battle Royale? Awesome, awesome. They just have the old map, remember the boys dropping back at the soccer field by Tilted? Don't fight us, don't fight us, we'll get you. Now, the hunter becomes the hunted. He said it, he said the thing! They're the Earth's first fighters. The ultimate predators. Okay. Um, ultimate means, like, last, if you're being technical about it, and they were not the last Predators, they were not the first fighters, I mean, what about all the Permian, and before that, all that stuff? No, no. <laughs> Alrighty, we're, we're running into a lot of mistakes here, but you can tell that they want this narrative about, oh, Ceratosaurus was at the top of his game, was doing epic, awesome, and then the king is dethroned by a newcomer, it's Allosaurus, and... That's just not what happened. I'll, I'll get more into it later. New discoveries in forensic science bring to life the prehistoric art of war. Jurassic Fight Club. I know I'm being annoying, but here we go. Even the name Jurassic Fight Club just kind of sucks, right? This came out in 2008, and clearly they are just banking off of the Jurassic Park hype. I think it might have been called Dinosaur Secrets in the UK, um, but it's just like, oh, it's Jurassic Fight Club. It, it just reminds you of Jurassic Park, which Jurassic Park 3 came out uh, seven years before this, but the, the hype was still going strong, and there were a lot of rumors about uh, Jurassic Park 4 coming out, with those dinosaur-human hybrid things, so it was just banking off of that hype. Even the name Jurassic Fight Club doesn't make sense. Way more episodes take place in the Cretaceous. But I guess Cretaceous Fight Club isn't as markable, or Mesozoic Fight Club, or I don't know, anything other than this. Just call it Dinosaur Secrets Everywhere. Oh, whatever. Alright, <laughs> let's continue. In 1870, a local farmer is tending his land just outside what is now Canyon City, Colorado. Okay, a lot of weed, a lot of weed when he suddenly sees strange bones jutting up from the soil. We now know that this quarry holds the remains of 10 different species of dinosaurs. The skeletons had been ripped apart and most of the bones were missing. What force could have ripped apart so many skeletons? Were scientists? Well, I mean, probably the answer is a uh, theropod that was eating them, which yeah, look, they have Allosaurus eating the sauropod. This one fails. This is from, uh, what, Bloodiest Battle. So this episode, Hunter Becomes Hunted, takes place after Bloodiest Battle. That was episode four of this uh, series. And it's kind of a rehash. But we'll see more of that soon. The discovery of the site near Canyon City was really interesting because so many different species of dinosaurs were all... And uh, this is Dinosaur George Blazing, like the lead expert paleontologist in uh, the show. He's really the, the leader of the show happening here. And I think he's more of a dinosaur enthusiast, not like an actual doctor. More like going around showing off dinosaur skeletons to kids and getting people hyped up about dinosaurs. Which, it's good, it has its place. I mean, I'm in that situation. But also, I don't peddle nonsense like Dinosaur George is, or at least I don't try to. I try to stick to the science, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. Why? Why is it? Okay, so it's showing Tenontosaurus, and it's showing Deinonychus here. We're talking about the Jurassic period. Uh, they were in a previous episode, episode 3, Gang Killers. Why are you showing them here? They have nothing to do with what we're talking about right now. They won't be around for another 40-ish uh, million years. Is rare. At Majungasaurus! Okay, they call it Majungatholus, but why, why is Majungasaurus showing up in our Jurassic episode? That's like end of the Cretaceous, like 70 to 66 million years ago. In Madagascar, it's not even the correct continent. You're joking, right? 
He's not joking. All right. All right. We still have we still have a lot of time to go. But oh, all right. No, they can't even be standards. Okay. Tanazosaurus, there are other ornithopods like a Camptosaurus, Dryosaurus living in uh, the Morrison. Not Tanazosaurus. We don't even have evidence of Dromaeosaurids living there. Is uh, exactly the reason why you don't get rich every time you go into a casino. The bones are torn apart by scavengers, maybe taken someplace else and eaten, or they get separated. Alright, Larry Martin, good information. Finding fossils is hard, there are a lot of elements against you. It's rare for something to actually fossilize or fossilize well, which makes it even harder to find like a good specimen. Alright, great, great. Everything that happens to an animal after it dies destroys information. Generally known as peaceful plant eaters, herbivores would not attack each other in this way. Well, I mean, okay, Jurassic, Jurassic Fight Club has this thing where it's like the plant eaters are usually peaceful and nice until they get attacked by a theropod, a meat eater. Um, no, <laughs> they probably were violent in their own way too. Okay, they're not biting each other like this and leaving giant gash marks from teeth and claws but you still find like on pachycephalosaurus domes lots of damage and uh, indentations from them smacking each other smacking their heads together um ceratopsians have puncture marks in their frills we have evidence of sauropods hurt not sauropods of uh, herbivores hurting each other so they weren't just these peaceful peace-loving losers <laughs> right. they, they, they still had some combat in their own lives, even when not being attacked. The investigators look for clues as to what kind of dinosaur might have caused this carnage. There's gonna be carnage. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! What does the scratches on the leg bone of a dinosaur mean? Oh, we got Lawrence Whitmer. Are they so Lawrence Whitmer does a lot of brain scanning and brain uh, neuroscience stuff with dinosaurs. Scanning the bones, scanning the skulls. Uh, I've referenced him a lot in my work. Then the question becomes, how can we figure out who made that tooth mark? Obviously, we need to know who are the potential perpetrators. Who is it potentially available to, if you will, commit this crime? Oh yeah, so there are a lot of flashes and fast forwards and speeding ups and slowing downs and like the color changes in Jurassic Fight Club because it's one of those 2000s documentaries that feels like it constantly needs to keep your attention like the audience just has no attention span whatsoever So it's like bam 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 something like that uh, And they have all these weird like graphics you saw with the bone They're showing like all the stuff moving on the screen that doesn't mean anything It's just there to keep our visual stimulation This was even before the TikTok generation where it's like okay we watch 20 second videos and move on uh, <laughs> no, I, I blame dinosaur documentaries like this for our short attention span these days. Uh, all right, let's keep going. <laughs> Mixed among the various herbivores' bones was a nearly complete skeleton of a monstrous-looking predator. Oh, it's kind of cute. Okay, the war gets annoying because this is like the same war for Ceratosaurus. It's very similar for Allosaurus and for Albertosaurus. They all use this war, and they were constantly. Uh, Alright, let's talk about the design soon. Ceratosaurus. Yeah, Ceratosaurus, my favorite! Not in this documentary. He stood 13 feet tall. Wrong! 20 feet long. How on earth? How in Shrek's green swamp is there a 13 foot tall Ceratosaurus? How on God's green swamp? Oh my god. Gosh, this is so horribly sized. <laughs> you can even look at the at the lines. They don't match up for 13 to 20 feet. It doesn't match up. You would expect the vertical line to be going over halfway to 20 feet, but it doesn't even come close to that. So even the proportions in the documentary itself are contradicting the information they're giving. Uh, this is a ginormous <laughs> Ceratosaurus. It would be like, a smaller one would be like five feet at the hips, larger can go six feet and a little over at the hips. Um, yeah, like about as tall as a human. 
and 20, maybe up to 24 feet long, depending on how large the specimen is, like about 20 something feet. The length is okay, which is why it makes no sense when it's that tall. Like a, a large Tyrannosaurus is 13 feet tall, and those things are 40, over 40 feet long. What were they thinking? <laughs> Where did they get this number from? Uh, oh my god. <laughs> Compared to later dinosaurs, such as Tyrannosaurus Rex... Yes, let's compare those. Size was smaller. They're the same height! They're the same height! Uh, and you can notice that the Ceratosaurus is very thin and shrink-wrapped, like it never ate in its life before. Ceratosaurus was a, all let's others. see, yeah, it was a bulkier theropod for its size. It was kind of thick and muscular and built, um, but here they have like really slender, kind of like raptor-like. Uh, it, it's not a great model. A nose horn. Yeah, you can see that. And, okay, the quality's not great there. Let's, the name Ceratosaurus means... Like, you can see it has this crest. And it has two crests above the eyes, but they just portray it as like a horn, something like out of Triceratops. When these were like probably colorful ornaments on its head, not these battle weapons. It would have been colorful and vibrant, not like a just a black horn. Horned lizard. Oh, look at that, that beautiful skull. Found that had a horn on its nose. Woo, Thomas Holtz. Uh, man, I hope this guy got paid well. Uh, he's one of my favorite paleontologists, does a lot of theropod um, studies and literature. He's a great dude, I think. I don't know him personally, but his work has been great. I don't know how they roped him into this thing. <laughs> he's usually the like voice of reason in this documentary. And yeah, you can see the fenestre, the holes in the skull of Ceratosaurus. You would not have been able to see that in real life. Uh, and the wrists are just completely pronated. They're just totally broken like this, like a valley girl, when they should be like ready to clap. This is basic <laughs> Dinosaur 101, especially in this time in 2008. We already had, uh, wait, we're only like five minutes into this. We already had documentaries starting to show the wrists in the correct position, um, lowering the amount of shrink wrapping, moving away from that Jurassic Park style from 15 years ago at this point, and here they are just banking on it. I do like that they have the osteoderm scoots going down the back. That's accurate. Uh, it wasn't a cone shaped horn or anything, it was actually a sort of a flat blade shape. They're not for a combat at all. And if we were to look at the modern. Ah, uh, see? Uh, Thomas Holtz being based again. Being based, as always. Equivalent. We might look at something like the crest on the top of the head of a rooster. See, he's saying it should be like this colorful crest, like a rooster. And they have these just like black stubby horns, like the devil or something. Just because that's cool, it's intense, whatever. I do also like, um, it's hard to see here, but it has three claws but four fingers, the fourth digit isn't clawed on Ceratosaurus, uh, which is a good touch. It's good attention to detail, which might be the only time I'm saying that. <laughs> I like the patterning too. Was too thin for combat, and like a rooster's crest, was most likely used to attract mates. Then why is it boring? Ugh, moving on. Ceratosaurus has a. Ugh, ugh. That's the skeleton. The skeleton is not good. One of the things it's too tall, too lean. It uh, it looks like a dromaeosaurid, and the wrist broken. Okay, why do they have a claw on the pinky here, but not in the actual model? That's just an oversight. This documentary keeps contradicting itself. I can't give a compliment without it stealing the compliment away from itself. Let me compliment you. Let me compliment you. I'm not making the same mistakes again. No, you're making you're making all new ones. <sighs> Things that tells us is that it's actually a more primitive dinosaur. The hand of Ceratosaurus having shorter fingers, even though it had four fingers, was definitely not as good for slashing prey. Ceratosaurus is a very deep skull with, for its size, extreme... Oh, I love that skull. It's such an iconic dinosaur. I love the, the large teeth. The teeth can be a little exaggerated on Ceratosaurus. When an animal dies, the teeth kind of slide out of their sockets. 
uh, so it might look longer than it was in real life. And it still probably would have been covered by lips. But still, it's just such an iconic look. This right here is my favorite thing ever in the history of forever. I think about this every day. I think about this all night long. Over 150 million years ago, Ceratosaurus stood out as an apex predator. No, it was not the apex predator. I like the sexual dimorphism though. Uh, this is the male, the one without these it has like yellow and red on, uh, like by its eyes on its face. It's good, like it's like with the uh, birds, you see the males are more vibrant and colorful. But you could have gone so much further with Ceratosaurus. It's Ceratosaurus! Why do you give it these lame, just dark crests when it should have been bright and colorful and fun? You could go crazy with it! I'm only like seven minutes in. I'm only like seven minutes in. In between the rivers, it might have been a little bit drier. Yeah, that's a good... ...vegetation that surrounded the rivers. That's good information. Even at, like, this time, there's kind of, like, talk about Ceratosaurus being more aquatic. I don't think that really went anywhere. Now we kind of see it as a more generalist predator that would just eat anything, its size is smaller. But kind of talk about it eating fish and turtles. Well, also, it's the more terrestrial one. Again, I don't think that went anywhere. But it was an interesting thought. I don't think Jurassic Fight Club goes too much into that. Ceratosaurus was perfectly designed for hunting in the densely forested areas that surrounded the river systems. And one of the problems with the teeth, though, they certainly are not as strong as the other teeth of theropod dinosaurs. Why do you show like Deinonychus teeth that's particularly super strong? There have been like Tenonosaurus bones that show like bite marks like the Deinonychus kind of strong enough to like puncture bone. But I mean it's still blade like teeth, didn't blade like teeth for Dromaeosaurids. Laterally. Tyrannosaurus would be a good example of a strong solid tooth. Those things are like railway spikes. So, a Ceratosaurus... There we go, Tyrannosaurus. ...grabbed a large animal with its mouth and then shook. They were not designed to cut bone, and its less than powerful hand claws did not appear capable of slashing bone. Well, they don't need to slash and cut the bone, you need to cut their flesh. Moving on. <laughs> it's like, uh, oh, whatever, moving so on. could Ceratosaurus have been responsible for the deep gash marks found on the bones from the site? Um, yeah, probably. It doesn't need to just crush bones and eat bones like a hyena or a tyrannosaurus. Oh, you're still munching on the corpse. You're still gonna scratch up against the bone. So, it could still be Ceratosaurus, but they're gonna say, no, it was the stronger predator. All right, let's go. Experts <laughs> say no. They're so predictable. <laughs> Not really suited for taking on adult sized stegosaurs or those long necked sauropods found at the site. But most of the teeth marks on the bones were much wider than the teeth of Ceratosaurus, and they went. See, they don't need all this extra visual stuff. It's just there for our attention span. But, um, yeah, that's factual. I don't think Ceratosaurus can come and attack a fully grown sauropod or stegosaurus. It might have trouble with the full stegosaurus. Uh, but again, could have scavenged, but they say that teeth marks might not have been wide enough. I don't know. I don't know. It depends on the tooth mark then. Much deeper into the bones than I think a Ceratosaurus could have bitten. So there's no way Ceratosaurus was a predator. To yeah, he says, I think, but then he says, there's no way. Like, maybe it could have. It could be large specimens of Ceratosaurus that are like six, six and a half feet tall, over 20 feet long, 20. 25 feet long that can do some more damage it's not impossible but he says there's no way I think it's like like they just present it as fact they have like some hypotheses that all right maybe maybe they're on to something but then they say no nope, definitely no <laughs> don't do that stop it get some help ceratosaurus may not have been capable of biting through bone but there was we didn't establish that if Maybe not through like large sauropod bones, but you could still leave scratch marks. We didn't establish that it's not capable, it's impossible. It's just conjecture. No doubt it was a successful predator. Bones have been found around the world, which is unusual. 
this prehistoric um, monster literally dominated the Earth. It's unclear what we have in Africa. Yes, North America and Europe, sure, we have Ceratosaurus. Africa is unclear. And I think there's like unclear South America remains. Close relatives of it lived in South America, and there's even traces that it might have lived in Africa. So it's sort of a wide ranging dinosaur. Uh uh, Thomas Holt's being based, saying like maybe, you know, there's some fragile material in Africa, stuff in South America, maybe relative. He doesn't say he doesn't like show just oh yes, Africa, Ceratosaurus. Thank you, Thomas Holt, for being based. We're the one saving grace of the show. The Ceratosaurus would have found great advantage in hunting in packs. Stop it with the pack hunting. Everything needs to be pack hunting in the show, and a lot of documentaries. We have no evidence of Ceratosaurus pack hunting, or any of its close relatives pack hunting. Even with dinosaurs that there is evidence, it's more circumstantial. It's not that clear. So it may not have been. We can't just jump to the conclusion for other theropods with some that kind of evidence, so I certainly can't say that Ceratosaurus pack hunted. There's no real evidence yet that it lived together in groups. Yes, Thomas Holtz. Holtz. Tell us something. They're for display. Yes, Thomas Holtz. They have a display structure. That means at least on occasion, you get together and you show off to each other. Compare that to the enormous sizes of the herbivores that lived with it. These predators needed to hunt cooperatively in groups. But you're contradicting yourself now. Before you said that they couldn't take on the sauropods and the stegosaurus, and they couldn't have been the attackers and the killers. But now you're saying like, oh yes, they did because they hunted in packs. Stop it. They, there was plenty for them to eat without hunting in a pack. There wasn't sauropods. They could have eaten Camptosaurus, Dryosaurus, uh, Ornithalestes. Um, younger, young sauropods, young stegosaurs. The fact that so few have been found makes it hard to say with certainty that they hunted in groups, but I have no problem believing that they did. Oh, uh, see, he, here's, here's Dinosaur George. We have no evidence of it, but wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be cool if they did? Like, stop it. There's plenty else for them to eat. Cat scans were conducted on the skull of Ceratosaurus. We now know that Ceratosaurus may have been an ambush predator. This meat eater to take on bigger game. Or set up an ambush to capture smaller, fast moving prey. Optic centers of the brain are relatively modest in Ceratosaurus. Could suggest. Right, um, and if you see Ceratosaurus' skull, you see the eyes are more on the side of its head rather than like Tyrannosaurus, where the eyes are more facing forward, giving it great binocular vision. So. It wouldn't have had as great of eyesight as a Tyrannosaurus, but a, like nothing in the fossil record does. So it's kind of a mean comparison for me. But yeah, uh, this is factual. The best then is that Ceratosaurus probably was an ambush predator. They're gonna go on about how Ceratosaurus, you know, they already mentioned it as a primitive dinosaur, primitive theropod, but then they have this super complex hunting strategy of, oh, one hides, the other one lures it into the trap that, uh, they were like wolves do. <laughs> Alright, so I'm the most complex, smartest, coolest predators we have today, and they make such cute and fluffy friends, you know, once after thousands of years of breeding. Very cute and fluffy friends. Um, but then they keep calling it this primitive predator. But I, I agree, Ceratosaurus probably did more of an ambush thing, because again, it was a stockier kind of predator, not this swift, long legged sprinter or, uh, um, marathon runner it would have done a quick burst of speed to catch its prey after an ambush the ceratosaurus implemented this hunting plan purely on instinct its small brain was incapable of strategic thinking so this is all instinct you you have to go choose a spot for the ambush make sure that you're both on the level you both know that this is the spot find prey bring it around and get it to the ambush spot, and then you come out at the exact same time, and this is all done by instinct? <laughs> That's their excuse for this? For this complex plan? No. <laughs> See that the, the brain is really quite a modest organ in, in this animal. It didn't have the claws, it didn't have the brains, and it also didn't have the size of some of the other giant meteors of its environment. Is that like a personal attack or something? On one hand, I kind of agree. Um, Allosaurus is a tetanurin, 
theropods, so kind of the more advanced models of theropods, while Ceratosaurus wasn't, was a little more early branching, which is why it has those still four-fingered hands, it's got a more modest brain, but it doesn't make it that much more primitive or less evolved in any way. Um, you see Ceratosauria still continue until the very end of the Cretaceous with the Abelosaurids, so it's not like this primitive, bad lineage that had to die out to make way for the better, more complex theropods. So, I mean, Ceratosaurus itself went extinct, but not all of its relatives. And here's Allosaurus. The there, only 20 yards from the spot where they found the Ceratosaurus, scientists uncovered a... That was not 20 yards. Are you kidding me? That was... That's like a... Like 10 feet at most, <laughs> not 20 yards. Another skeleton. This one was also for my non-US uh, people out there, you know, everywhere else in the world, a yard is like a bit less than a meter. So, so one okay. of the most terrifying predators of the Jurassic. And next to them are not one, but two meat eaters. One is Ceratosaurus. I think they showed the same type of theropod, kind of Allosaurus looking, has a weird skull here. Has one bump above the eye, maybe more Allosaurus looking. And they're like the same model, I've never noticed that before. Allosaurus, a medium sized predator with a striking horn design that marked each individual dinosaur as distinctly as fingerprints. It was, without a doubt, one of the most terrifying dinosaurs of the late Jurassic. Okay, here we get to Allosaurus, and Jurassic Fight Club just completely, they adore Allosaurus. Dinosaur George, like, he would date an Allosaurus if he had a chance. Like, when, when he's with his wife, I don't know if he has a wife, but he, he holds a picture of Allosaurus. Um, just to enhance the experience here, okay? Um, this is, again, a repeat of Bloodiest Battle. Where the Ceratosaurus just gets, it shows up early, eats um, a stuck young Stegosaurus, and then gets walloped by a pack of Allosauruses mercilessly. And um, they kind of keep praising it as the advanced one, the cool one, the awesome one, one of the best, scariest carnivores of all time. And I think on their website, on Discovery Channel's website, I don't think it's available now, but they had like other side videos. And they had one about how Allosaurus, oh, this is the deadliest dinosaur ever. And it was just like a circle jerk of just people talking about how awesome Allosaurus is. Uh, <laughs> it's a good, I mean, it's a great animal, very interesting. No hate towards Allosaurus or Allosaurus fans out there. But you're just hyping it up so much as this amazing thing. All right. Uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex may have ruled the Cretaceous, but Allosaurus was the king of the Jurassic. Allosaurus was the top predator of the late Jurassic of Western North America. Um, yes, it would be an apex predator, but it also lived with other theropods that were about the same size, like a Torvosaurus and Sorophaganax, which could have been a little larger, a very close relative of Allosaurus, um, which is also called um, Allosaurus Maximus. I think more paleontologists leans towards, towards Sorophaganax being its own separate genus rather than another species of Allosaurus. Um, but Allosaurus, although very common, the most common theropod we have of the Jurassic, it wasn't the biggest and the baddest thing ever. There were other guys there too that deserved some respect and attention. It had powerful jaws with pretty sharp teeth. It had extremely large claws on its hand. Which... For nearly 20 million years, Ceratosaurus had dominated the region of North America with a working mountain. Here they go again. They want to do this whole narrative. Spinning and twisting the facts to push the narrative. Oh, here you go, full screen. So there we go. All right. A bigger, faster, stronger adversary marked the next stage in dinosaur evolution. Right. So, oh, Ceratosaurus was on top, and then the newer, cooler Allosaurus came and took its place. Also, in this episode, you see Ceratosaurus and Allosaurus chasing this tail, the striped tail. 
I think it's meant to be a stand-in for like a I don't know a Dryasaurus or Nanosaurus or something. Um, but this comes from the Deinonychus model. They're just reusing the Deinonychus model, which wouldn't appear again until like a hundred twelve-ish million years ago, around there. So way forward into the future, into the early Cretaceous. The Allosaurus was, in fact, a major evolutionary step toward the ultimate monster, the T-Rex. They're, they're not monsters. Shorter. They're just they're just animals. I do like the Allosaurus model. It's it's pretty good. It's not as shrink wrapped. You still see some of that. In some shots like this, the hands are correct, but then in other shots, they completely break, which is mildly infuriating. I do like the patterning on it, and I love that. That red crest and that red face. The skull is a little longer than maybe a fragilis. I'm thinking it's more like a Jim Adseni, which hadn't been named yet. With a more elongated pre maxilla. It was much more powerfully built than the other predators of the late Jurassic era. Planning you face first into the mud. Yeah, that's a bloodiest battle right there. Yeah, I said in my original review of this years ago that like Ceratosaurus went cloaca to cloaca with the George's wife. So I just love seeing Allosaurus get crushed and killed and maimed in every single possible way. Um, yes, Allosaurus was cool. Um, it's deadly, it would easily kill you. But it wasn't like the be-all, end-all dinosaur of all time. It was probably comparable to a great white shark. Yeah, so I should say that, uh... Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus both appeared and disappeared at about the same time. They both appeared at about 150-ish million years ago, give or take, and disappeared around 145-ish, 146-ish million years ago at the end of the Jurassic. What? They did not displace the other Allosaurus, they didn't beat out Ceratosaurus, drive it extinct, and then take its place. No, they lived together and probably filled different niches in the environment. Again, maybe Ceratosaurus is more of a generalist, eating anything smaller than it. Um, different ornithopods throughout its environment, um, smaller stegosauruses, anything like that. Well, Allosaurus can eat the sauropods or stegosaurus. We have fossil evidence, direct evidence of it getting into confrontation with stegosaurus. Um, so they would have had different niches to fill. Sure, they probably fought over a carcass every now and then, came into some disputes, but it's not like they're arch nemeses out to get each other and one destroys the other. Like, no, stop it. And I feel fine because I've got a nemesis. Allosaurus represented a considerable <laughs> oh, 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 upgrade from the Ceratosaurus. Oh, oh my god, what the heck is that? What is that? A 15 foot tall Allosaurus? Are you kidding me? <laughs> that's like... That's insane. <laughs> okay, 13 feet is a large Tyrannosaurus. 15 feet is more than Tyrannosaurus. More than Giganotosaurus and Carcharodontosaurus. That's like pushing Spinosaurus with the sail. <laughs> right? This thing is huge. Um, 35 feet long, that's a bit of an exaggeration also. Most Allosaurus fragilis, or Jim Adseni fragilis, Europeus, they max out at about 30-ish feet long, like between uh, 9 and 10-ish meters is where you get Allosaurus. Um, not up to like 35 feet, which would be more like 11 meters. Um, no. <laughs> that would be more into Sorphagonax territory. That's about where you'd expect the Sorphagonax. Although some estimates for it go crazy, like into 40, 40 something feet. But uh, 35 feet is a good estimate for a Sorphagonax. 15 feet, that's way too tall. Whoever came up with this graphic was just smoking crack, right? They were way too high. In fact, its size was unprecedented for its time. Nope, not really. There was already Torvosaurus. Come on, game. Come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. 15 feet tall and weighing up to five tons. <clears throat> uh, five tons? Three to five tons? Even that lower estimate is too, too heavy. 
And it's estimated that an Allosaurus would have been about two tons. Maybe a little more or less. About two tons. Not three to five tons. You are approaching Acrocanthosaurus, uh, Giganotosaurus, Tyrannosaurus with that five ton estimate. No, no, no. No, no, no. Allosaurus was the size of a railroad boxcar. That's a random thing to compare to. Americans will use anything but the metric system. Going and, uh, suggests another oh no. characteristic that made Allosaurus dangerous. Here it comes. These behemoths lived in packs as commonly seen in predators. You say it's less commonly seen in predators, but you keep showing it with like every other predator. Alright, but this is this is just garbage. Sorry, gobbledygook. Alright, this probably comes from the Cleveland Lloyd Corps. You find a bunch of Allosauruses dead together. Most of the bones that get pulled out are Allosaurus. But it's not because they were a pack that died together. It's that a bunch of different Allosaurus came to this one spot and then probably started killing each other. It's the exact opposite of evidence you would use for pack hunting. You would see just total cannibalism and murder among these Allosaurus that come here. Not, oh, we're a pack, let's sing Kumbaya. Murder, Goofy, shut up. I love murder. Watch your dinosaurs, everyone. Do a great explanation of why so many Allosaurus are found together. Um, I think the main hypothesis right now is that it was a drying lake bed, so they would all be brought to this location uh, for water and for food. And they would eat up the food that's there and eventually scare off the other herbivores until there's nothing else to kill. And they start killing each other. That's why you find so many Allosaurus. They keep getting drawn to the spot to feed, but then they become the hunted. That would have been a better episode than this. But I think Bloodiest Battle was more about the Cleveland Lloyd. Because back then they thought that it was a predator trap. Animals got stuck in the mud. And the Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus came to feast. But uh, I think that that's out of favor right now. Sorry. So when we see large accumulations, it makes us wonder what's going on. Did these animals live in large groups? Family groups are very effective for- It stinks, because I do like the model. Whoever made this Allosaurus model, like, their, their talent was wasted. Predators, because hunting on your own, your chances of success are limited. So by living in a family group, and hunting in a family group, it ensures your chances of survival. Allosaurus was an intelligent creature with the capacity to form strategies. Okay, Allosaurus, maybe a tetanurin, a more complex of a theropod, but not this big brain times intelligent planning creature. No, stop it. Stop it. In terms of its, its position in the family tree of predatory dinosaurs, it was kind of right in the middle. And it wasn't like the really sort of very bird-like dinosaurs like, like Deinonychus. Oh yeah, they have just... They introduced some feathering later on, but Deinonychus is totally bare. Um, some people might put feathers on Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus. I, I don't know, I don't do that. Um, but yeah, get used to not seeing many feathers around here. No genius by any means, but smarter probably than any other large predator within its uh, environment. All right, thank you, Kirkland, for trying to bring some sanity to this. It's like, it's like Dinosaur George and the narrator like pushing these just weird myths, and then the all the paleontological consultants are trying to just reel them back in. Come back, stop it, stop it. <laughs> Let let's tone it down a little. He's got massive jaw muscles. He's designed for cracking through bone. It's really strange that uh, Jurassic Park Club is going for this bone-crushing Allosaurus narrative, because at the time especially is when you had that Allosaurus as a hatchet killer around. I do appreciate that Jurassic Fight Club didn't go that route. It's a pretty goofy and I think an inefficient, ineffective way to dispatch of prey. Um, and it'd be hard to aim and to land and... Just Kind of a clunky way to kill things. Um, but I feel like they're starting to go in the other direction. Like, oh, this steel-crushing, bone-crushing killer. It's it's by force still wasn't no, it wasn't anywhere near Tyrannosaurus still. But still respectable, got the job done. Now they're just overhyping it. 
If it took a bite, it would probably jerk its head back and shake its prey and try to rip out a big chunk of flesh. An Allosaurus was feeding on sauropods, animals that are multi times the size of our largest mammals today, the elephant. Yes, yes, James Kirkland, they are, but probably weren't going after fully grown sauropods. Even the previous episode, uh, Bloody's Battle, said that attacking a Bulkamarasaurus would be rare. Bulkamarasaurus wasn't even that large of a sauropod. It's still a giant creature, but not for sauropod standards, you had other things like. Uh, Patasaurus and Brachiosaurus that were huge. So they probably weren't going after the full adults, maybe like the juveniles and the sub-adults that were easier targets. Allosaurus constantly replenished their supply, growing new ones when old ones were ripped out during... It's true, totally true. Dinosaurs kept replacing their teeth. Unlike us. A deadly three-pronged rake that ripped through thick hide and literally tore the flesh off its prey. Right, I get what they're saying with Allosaurus, but the way they depict it, the hand claws look similar to Ceratosaurus's claws. Like, the arms are the same proportion, the claws are, like, the same size. I think they could have toned down Ceratosaurus's arms a little to make it look a little less hench. The hand claws would have been like an eagle on steroids. <laughs> nice. Allosaurus among the meat. Is that a graphical error? Hold on. Yeah, you can see its leg here is kind of see-through. You can see the shadow of this foot going through this leg. Never noticed that before. Allosaurus. Unless it's meant to be transparent, but the rest of the body is not, like, transparent, translucent. The it just seemed like, a, uh, like an error. This is a replica of the claw. And if we look at this, this is the ungual. This is the actual bone. A couple carina here, very effective in ripping, puncturing, and grasping its prey. That's a good point. We have the claws of these creatures and of a lot of theropods, and they can grow pretty large, uh, but then you have to take into account um, the keratin around those claws to make it look even longer and larger and scarier. When you look at the hand claws, you notice that they're rounded underneath. They're, they're not sharp at all versus, say, an animal like Utahraptor that tended to have a, a sharp blade on the underneath side of the claw. Well, I, I think, the, again, we're contradicting ourselves here. Before, it was said that they would rip out chunks of flesh with the claws, hyping up how cool these claws are. And then you have a Robert Gaston here saying that they're more designed for grabbing and gripping animals rather than slashing and slicing them. Stay consistent, get your story right, or at least listen to your paleontological consultants. You hired them, you paid them to be here, listen to them. Why would you pay them to be here if you're not going to take their advice? Allosaurus relied on speed for catching prey. And that was its third weapon. They were able to peg Allosaurus's top speed at 21 miles per hour. Fast for a large predator. Right, but... You have to take into account that Allosaurus wasn't that large of a predator. It's not like Tyrannosaurus, where it's like 8, 9, maybe up to 10 or more tons that had to be lumbered and lugged around. Allosaurus is only about a 2 ton predator, so it, it was able to move a little faster. Gouge and bite marks, uh, some of these uh, gouge marks on the bones, these are all caused by Allosaurus who or no doubt, uh, eating these carcasses. They keep dismissing the other animals in its environment. They do mention that there was some competition, but it's like, oh, they're large bite and gash marks. It has to be Allosaurus. Allosaurus is so awesome. They're the top predator. They can destroy anything. But again, there were other creatures around. Torvasaurus, Sorophaganax, that could have done damage. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Leave these, these gouges and these large large bones. Can experts reconstruct what could have happened here? So I have no doubt that these two predators came in contact with each other and competed for the same resources. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just because they live together and they're both theropods doesn't mean they competed for the same resource. They could be eating different things, different animals. Oh, there's a whole plethora, a whole buffet in that area of animals to eat. And by avoiding their competition, they can both be successful. We are just lucky to find more Allosaurus in that bone bed. It doesn't mean they were these super successful, awesome killers. 
I don't think Allosaurus played well with others, and so it makes sense to me that it would attempt to kill any competitor in its territory. These animals lived in the same- I don't think Allosaurus would be that interested. And potentially would have been competitors. One way to decrease competition is for each of them to actually take or specialize in different prey. Yes, Lawrence Whitmer is trying to bring- He's trying to bring logic into this. Thank you, Lawrence Whitmer. There is typically hunted with- I heard, I don't know how much I could confirm this, but that animals or different predators, their territories can overlap, so that you don't want to share the same territory with a rival of your own species. You're not so concerned about killing or driving off everything else from another species, unless you're in a direct competition over a carcass or something like that. Or they're a threat to your children or anything like that. I'm not sure how true that is or how much that holds water, but that's at least what I've heard before. So maybe Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus, well, wouldn't have been so concerned about clearing each other out. Maybe unless there's like a direct competition over a carcass or something, they can have a bit more of a live, let live, let's avoid each other type of situation. Let's not get into a scrap with one another because what's the point? I don't want to get injured and you're not a threat to me right now. Because again, if they get injured, then they can't hunt. If they can't hunt, then they can't eat and they die. So, you wouldn't want to risk that constant competition, constant fighting with another species. And, again, if you size the Allosaurus back down to where it should be, like 28, 30 feet long, about 9, 10 meters, then it's not that much larger than maybe a large, grown Ceratosaurus. It might be like 5, 6 feet longer, 2 meters longer. Um... Maybe like two tons rather than the a thousand pound Ceratosaurus. So it might be a lot larger in weight, but it doesn't like completely tower over a Ceratosaurus. A Ceratosaurus might still be a threat, especially for a not fully grown individual. So you wouldn't want to be fighting every Ceratosaurus that you saw. I don't know if I'm making sense, but let's continue. <laughs> looking at fundamentally two different animals. They have different ancestries. Uh, the Ceratosaurus comes from a, a group. Thank you, Phil Curry. Thank you. He, he's kind of explaining the things I already went into about their lineage here. It's much more ancient. The Allosaur, on the other hand, is a group of dinosaurs that uh, appeared later in time. We can look at modern jaguars to see animals that sort of played the same role that Ceratosaurus does. Jaguars take on medium to smaller prey. Why does it say jaguar? There's no I R E in there. It's jaguar. Jaguar. Say it with me, Dinosaur George. Jaguar. Jaguar. Are you kidding me? Now compare that to Allosaurus, who's much heavier and more powerful. That's a terrible example. They could have gone with something like uh, a leopard versus a tiger or a lion. Um, the smaller. Um, ambush hunter versus the larger apex predator. That would have been better. If Ceratosaurus was the jaguar of the Jurassic, then Allosaurus was the tiger. Like modern tiger- But they don't live together <laughs> on different continents, so it's not, not a great comparison. Maybe Puma versus Jaguar or something too. Allosaurus was the ultimate predator of its domain. It could take on anything it wanted. But so is the jaguar today in South and Central America. It's the ultimate predator down there. Oh, whatever. <laughs> he can't keep getting away with it! He can't keep getting away with it! The Allosaurus had much longer legs, which made it almost as fast. Up to 4,000 pounds? What on earth kind of Ceratosaurus are you smoking? What if it's about 1,000 pounds or more? Not 4,000 pounds, two tons of Ceratosaurus. But to offset its smaller size and less powerful body, it hunted in pairs. What? Where did you get this from? We, we don't find pairs of Ceratosaurus constantly living together. Where did this come from? H how did you figure this? What? <laughs> okay, I started from 
yeah, most predators are probably solitary, but can come together in mating time too. They lived in pairs. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. It wouldn't be unusual for predators like Ceratosaurus to hunt in pairs, and we see uh, that in members of the raptor family. No, first of all, no we don't. That's still speculation, and then you're taking the highly speculative, probably, maybe not, and say, oh, that applies to all theropod dinosaurs, even theropods that they admit weren't even closely related to each other. Most most dinosaurs, most predators even today, including the dinosaurs that are around today, don't hunt in packs or pairs. Most of them still hunt individually, uh, especially if we look at modern archosaurs like the birds which are dinosaurs and the descendants of theropod dinosaurs and are theropod dinosaurs. Very, very, very few examples of them hunt in pairs. You have, congratulations, you have the Harris hawk. And I believe there's like some footage of crocodiles. Sometimes crocodiles are smart enough to uh, hunt together cooperatively. You find these small examples that are clearly not the norm. These are exceptions to the norm. And then you blow it up to say, well, this happened with all of them. And it's happened with all the dinosaurs because we find these tiny minute examples of this happening in relatives today. When if you actually looked at the full the full range of creatures, you would see that most of them hunt individually still. So we could probably safely assume that the same was true of dinosaurs. And I'm working on a paleo myths now about raptors hunting in packs. I'll see where that ends up. But from what it seems, I don't think it's going to get a good rating. They all set their small sizes by working in a group to take on much larger prey. Predators today will seek out and hide along game trails. Those are trails that herbivores use to get to and from food and water. Yes, thank you. I watched The Lost World. I know what this is. Or they can work as a team to drive prey along a trail towards the <sighs> Stop it. Just stop it already. This is so painful. Stop it. You have no evidence that Ceratosaurus hunted in packs. And the, Allosaurus for, the evidence for Allosaurus is just abysmal. Oh my gosh, stop it already. Yes, they could have ambushed their prey. They probably did, but not as a pack teaming up together and coming up with this convoluted plan. That's what wolves do, because wolves are brilliant, modern, cute animals. Mate. Game trails are like roadmaps to the dinner table as far as predators are concerned. While it's theorized Ceratosaurus would stick almost exclusively to these trails, the Allosaurus was large enough to venture off from them in safety. Who is theorizing this? Who published a study on which diapods hunted in game trails or not? Who's theorizing this? Dinosaur George? Some, they asked some guy on the street, like, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Come on. Come on, man. Allosaurus may have actually concentrated on, on maybe larger prey. Ceratosaurus with its longer teeth suggests that it might have actually been feeding on somewhat smaller prey. Find that most predators are specialized in what they hunt. Although the but why do you keep contradicting yourself? One moment you're saying that Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus are in fierce competition and they, they need to knock each other out. And now you're saying that they have separate niches. Like, it's like, no wonder why everyone who hates this documentary, you keep, you keep saying one thing and then you, you correct yourself or, or maybe you ruin what you said. I, you keep being inconsistent with it. Just, just stick to one story or, or, um, you could present different theories, hypotheses, but you keep just scrambling all the information together. You're not even structuring it as in, okay, this paleontologist says this and the other paleontologist says this. No, just preventing presenting different facts that contradict each other. You're giving different stories that are contradictory. I have no words. Nothing. Would a Ceratosaurus attack a larger, more powerful adversary like Allosaurus? Uh, no. Would a Ceratosaurus take on an Allosaurus? Well, yes, depending on the circumstances. Maybe if, like, they're threatening a child, 
Or they were desperate for their kill that an Allosaurus is threatening. Yeah, Alright, what do you say? If Allosaurus was protecting a kill or defending a territory, then I believe they would certainly at least stand their ground against Allosaurus. Sometimes my genius is... It's almost frightening. The bones tell us things like how big the animal was, whether it ate plants or meat, if it was fast or slow. So when we recreate what may have happened, we do our very best to ensure that there's a basis for reality. We they say this. But we're going to see in the future that that's not the case with this one. And this also has not been the case. They just kind of come up with just wild speculation that, oh, the T-Rex killed the Nano Tyrannus because the Nano Tyrannus was attacking its uh, younglings. And Nano Tyrannus um, typically goes after juvenile T-Rexes because it gets out of the competition. And then also that Majungasaurus, we have bite marks of one attacking another, or just eating another. Oh, so we make up this whole convoluted plot about, uh... The male was trying to mate with the female, and then it killed the child because it had to get the child out of the way to mate with the female. But then the female attacked and killed the male for doing that. And they keep coming with these giant convoluted stories for their fossils. It's not that. The... All right, I think that a show like Jurassic Fight Club has a lot of potential, right? You can look at cool dinosaur discoveries, find out what happened there. And then present that possible scenarios as to, okay, this could have happened, or maybe it was this. And this is how we got these fossils that ended up like this. That could have been a really cool documentary. But the thing is, they just kind of, like, spin a narrative first, and then, like, clump together. Okay, maybe we kind of use these fossils as the example of this narrative that we want. Uh, and they just kind of, like, haphazardly tie these convoluted stories with these fossil finds that don't really suggest what they're pushing. So they just go way overboard with it rather than being uh, that educational with it. We use as much science as possible and we rely on our understanding of modern animal behaviors so that what you see is a realistic depiction. That's not true. For the Megalodon one, I remember they brought in like some artist, writer, guy to argue that Megalodon was still alive while well, scientists are actually saying that no that's a stupid idea of course Megalodon is extinct it's not always about the science they try to peddle a bit or have this debate over whether Megalodon was alive when it clearly is not alive so don't give me that we're in it for it's the real. science we're trying to push the science stuff no you're not you're trying to push just a cool documentary just, just some dinosaurs killing and fighting each other. Descend from the same crocodile like ancestor. <laughs> some experts believe that the Ceratosaurus was more comfortable in the water. Oh, that's kind this of interesting. Meeting of the Ceratosaurus. They, they do mention uh, an aquatic Ceratosaurus uh, theory. Interesting. It's an Allosaurus, an incredibly uncommon event. Wow. Wow. But it's maybe an incredibly uncommon event, but uh, we gotta have, we gotta have the fight, we gotta see them clash, gotta get the blood and the gore in there for audiences, gotta be epic, bro. Now we're getting towards the actual battle here, after they explain the Ceratosaurus and the Allosaurus. find Allosaurus bones, they almost always show signs of breaks, fights, and other injuries. Yeah, I guess who they were fighting with. Each other, all the large herbivores, not constantly ceratosaurus. Ceratosaurus bones are usually found unmarked. For them, contact was a last resort. Yeah, you can't infer too much behavior about this. That uh, let's see. Eyes placed closer to the sides of its head. Oh, they mentioned that too. Field of vision and help it spot potential trouble. I would say that that might be um, preservation bias here, because again, with the Cleveland Lloyd Corps and all the Allosaurus are just attacking each other, maybe killing each other, uh, scavenging, scavenging each other, they might have more damage. Well, you can you find a lot of damage on, say, the Big Al specimen, and um, the Stegosaurus punctured specimen. Now, we just find a lot of Allosauruses, well, Ceratosaurus might be a bit rare to find. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that Tyrannosaurus weren't engaging in combat. It just means that Allosaurus lived a very precarious life, or at least the ones we found have. Perhaps they would only venture into dangerous territory when driven by terrible hunger. 
So I guess that, that makes sense why they might be shrink up. The shrink up design is terrible, but at least they say that okay, the ceratosaurus might be starving. Still, the build isn't good. The design's not great, and they're clearly. I guess not just Serratus Swords, but this clear design of the series that they just shrink wrap everything. So no, don't go in defending Jurassic Fight Club like, oh no, they said it was hungry. Ah, that's good. No, it's just the design of the show is what they do. And they're showing Ceratosauruses that were shrink wrapped without possibly being hungry. Just overview of Ceratosaurus. Saurs like Allosaurus and Tyrannosaurus Rex would have marked the boundaries of their territory with scent marks like modern predators do. Nope, 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 nope. Modern mammals like cats and dogs have scent glands in their rear ends that allow them to do scent markings. Reptiles do not really do that. They do not do that. These scent marks were a clear warning to intruders that they were not welcome. I, I'm sure a dinosaur could smell another dinosaur, but it's not like modern archosaurs show those scent glands that modern mammals have. One of the favorite hunting methods of Ceratosaurus is the hide-and-seek method. How do you know what the favorite method of Ceratosaurus is? Again, it, you, you would say so, it's more rare than Allosaurus. How do you know? <laughs> You're just, you're not pre presenting it as hypotheses or theories, you're just saying, oh yes, this is it. This is what we know is true. Even though it's just total speculation. She'll hide in a dense grove of trees along a game trail, standing motionless. While the females in hiding, her mate... Oh, yeah, there's Zynonychus. ...moves to circle behind their potential prey. He will then try to flush their quarry and chase it towards the hiding female. This is what Jurassic Fight Club does. They introduce an idea as kind of speculation, kind of a hypothesis or a theory, like maybe we did it, maybe we did it this, and even then it's shaky. So they have a shaky foundation, and on that foundation that's already shaky, they put another idea that's shaky. Like, okay, so we have Deinonychus hunted pack, shaky idea at best. Now we have Ceratosaurus hunts in packs. Terrible, uh, no, stop it, we have no evidence for that. But you base it on that terrible, uh, well not terrible, but that shaky foundation already. So you have an even shakier structure, and on top of that you're like, oh they hunted in pairs. And then on top of that, it's like, okay, so one of them hit, they did this hide and seek method, uh, one of them stood still, the other one chased the prey in, and then the female comes out and surprise attacks while the male is chasing it in. And yes, we know this. This is their favorite method. Here, please hit me as hard as you can. Don't hold back. And it's like, you just took so many logical gaps <laughs> and you're presenting it as fact. Oh my goodness. That's the problem with this show. That's, that's how they operate. No. Stop it! Stop it! Once the male knows that the prey has gotten on the game trail, the chase ensues. He's trying to drive the prey into the waiting arms of his hidden mate. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know what it is. This episode has broken me already. We haven't gotten to like the worst of it. This episode has broken me. <laughs> it's like nine minutes left and I'm just defeated. I'm hurt. I am sad. I want my blankie, want my mommy, want nice chocolate milk, and I'm, I'm sad. We'll use a loud roar to drive the prey and alert his hiding mate. Okay, but um, again, we have to come to this, this idea that dinosaurs couldn't roar. We're starting to find more vocal structures, soft tissue structures in dinosaurs like um, an ankylosaurid, but... We can't just jump to dinosaurs roar. Maybe they can bellow or hiss or boom or some stuff like that. Growl. But not these loud, full roars. Some of them, they might not have had the organs to produce these sounds. At least we don't have that evidence or uh, we can't suggest that they made these sounds yet. We don't know. She has no idea that while she's laying in ambush for this prey, she herself 
is being preyed upon. We're, okay, okay, we're contradicting ourselves again. So, so you start, you say that Ceratosaurus has eyes on the side of its head to detect other predators and avoid danger, but now you're saying that the Allosaurus is already in striking distance and ready to attack the Ceratosaurus, but it's completely clueless. And I know why you're about to say that. Let me get to there. Slowly begins to move up behind her, trying to be as quiet as he can. This allows even the fourth. What? You just did a roar. How? How are you sneaking up if you just did like a big roar, like a roar? And you're sneaking? No, stop it. Your sneak level is like a ten. Okay. You're trying to present one narrative, but then you show something else. Ton Allosaurus to sneak up on its victim. It also allows it to grip the ground more firmly, preventing missteps. Firmly grasp it which would alert its quarry. The Allosaurus exerts one ton of pressure with its bite, a lethal force. I'll have to go and see how strong the Allosaurus bite force is. I'll show it on board. I don't have that exactly memorized. All she sees is the wide open mouth of the Allosaurus. Who crushes her by the Let's see, how many times are we gonna watch Ceratosaurus die? <laughs> so we got one. Next, snapping the bones as if they were twins. Alright, two. She broken, she's completely lifeless, and slumps to the ground. The Ceratosaurus may ultimately Three. do it with limited <laughs> brain capacity. Only able to concentrate on one thing at a time. Yeah, so they say that Ceratosaurus has limited brain capacity, but they have it having this complex plan of hunting. Oh, but that's that's instinct to come up with complex plans. It is too slow to recognize the danger. It's it's kind of interesting that they have again the Alistair is not doing the hatchet bite, but if it ever was going to do a hatchet bite, it's this exact scenario where the prey is completely still. It's a small part of a smaller animal, the neck of a ceratosaurus. They could just hatchet it down so you can you could it's still so you can aim it easier. Um, that's the perfect opportunity to do it if it ever did do that. Um, I, not that I'm saying that it's show, but it's just interesting. To the male, who is rushing in, thinking the female will jump out at any moment. But, from the way the female died, shouldn't he be able to see her from her spot? This looks like a different spot than where the female was hiding. Uh, yeah, I, won't you be able to see the Allosaurus? It has to make this big, dramatic entrance later, so of course not. The Allosaurus bellows loudly at the male Ceratosaurus. Likely louder than the roar of a jumbo jet taking off. Jumbo. This deafening sound. Where did you get that from? We don't have that evidence. We don't have those vocal cords of an Allosaurus yet. We can't tell. Meant to warn off adversaries. He senses something's wrong, but has no idea what. <laughs> Here's giant Allosaurus Vore. Hmm, there's something going on. This is kind of sus. I have no knowledge of any of this. This is so bizarre. Catches slight movement. As he turns and looks, he sees the silhouette of a massive Allosaurus. Oh, so the male can catch the slight movement, but the female just completely helpless. It's too dumb to see anything. Sneaking up on it. All right. All right. That's perception one. That is now closing in. They have a very similar similar war. And I'm already sick of it. We've, we haven't even started to fight. They're just giving the same war constantly at each other. Oh, gosh. It's going to get really annoying, guys. The Allosaurus' jaws snap shut within inches of the Ceratosaurus, but he's, the male can only assume she's run off, or worse, the Allosaurus has killed her. Oh, so the Ceratosaurus is smart enough to make assumptions now. Cool. Like many bird species, the Ceratosaurus probably mated for life, but now he can- How do you- what do you mean? How do you know that it mated for life? What are you talking about? Again, alright, we have on the, 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 the tier, we have another. All the shaky ideas compounding until you just have a foundation or a building, a structure that's just wobbling back and forth, completely unsound. Ceratosaurus made it for life, guys. We know it. We figured it out. No concentrate only on survival. He knows that in this dense forest, he can maneuver a lot quicker. 
The Allosaurus stands its ground and simply leans that monstrous. Again, too dumb, Sarasaurus, but it can it can still use tools, use its environment to its advantage, like oh, ducking in and out of the trees. Okay. Body forward, snapping that mouth every time the Ceratosaurus steps from behind a tree. Ceratosaurus looks at his attack and recognizes the two. He realizes that if he can outflank the Allosaurus and jump on its side, the Allosaurus has no defense. Planning Ceratosaurus, okay. Genius. His long, stiffened tail is designed like a balancing pole. He can leap onto the side of that Allosaurus and use that tail to balance. Stop. Earlier you said that the tail wasn't as good for agility. Now you're saying that, oh, it's this great tool that it can use to balance. While he's up there. It would be like the world's first rodeo rider, only this rodeo ends in death. How long did it take you to come up with that one? Oh, that's, uh, what was that, four? Is that four or five? Yeah, yeah this Jurassic Fight Club is basically... These episodes are just a Ceratosaurus torture porn. It's like they just, they hate Ceratosaurus or just think Allosaurus is just so awesome and amazing. And the only way to prove that Allosaurus is amazing is for it to constantly crush and kill the Ceratosaurus. Whenever you see a Ceratosaurus on screen, it's just gotta be like, this is, this is interesting, but the Allosaurus is way better. And I gotta hype up the Allosaurus by making it kill the Ceratosaurus. Um, this happens in when dinosaurs roamed America a bit, when the Allosaurus kills the Ceratosaurus. This happens in Camp Cretaceous with the Scorpius Rex and it kills the Ceratosaurus. Ceratosaurus is just a punching bag. If you need to show that a predator is cool, make it kill a Ceratosaurus. <laughs> that, that'll do it. No, um, oh my goodness. Uh, the Jurassic franchise annoys me with this too, like it has to constantly do this. It's like, okay, the Spinosaurus is really cool, we have to show it. Just quickly dispatch a T-Rex and everyone will see how cool and awesome this new predator is. And that the Indominus, oh my gosh, it's so awesome. It has to fight the T-Rex and that's going to be so cool. It's going to team up with the Velociraptor and then they're going to defeat the Indominus. And, and then uh, when in Dominion, oh, we have the, we have the Giganotosaurus. Uh, it's going to kill the T-Rex. Uh, it's going to be so awesome. And uh, I think with a Giganotosaurus kind of does this too. Where it has to be, oh, it's cool, it's bigger than the T-Rex, it has to beat the T-Rex. Um, you don't have to do this to show how cool and big and awesome and scary something is. It could be good on its own merits in a documentary like this. It could be an interesting animal in its own merits without putting down, crushing, constantly killing and showing up another creature. Uh, you don't need to show Ceratosaurus is this chump that keeps getting bitten and killed by the Allosaurus. Uh, it just does a disservice to Ceratosaurus. Like, they talk about how, yes, Allosaurus, how Ceratosaurus had its own niche, its own thing, was a good predator in its own right, but we need to hype up Allosaurus, so, uh... And he's dead, dead, another dead one, deady, deadified, two more dead, dead from the neck up, dead from the neck down, but that's life. Judging by its size and skeleton, the Ceratosaurus would have been able to jump almost 20 feet in the air. 20 feet in the air? Oh my god, that's huge. It's like, that's like over three times its own height. Um, this is the second episode that does this. Like, they do the Ceratosaurus torture porn thing in Bloody's Battle. And they're like, you know, we need another episode. So what if we took this segment and made just an entire episode of how much better Allosaurus was than Ceratosaurus. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. That'll fill up the runtime. So then they just make this entire episode of Ceratosaurus getting killed and hammered and tortured by this Allosaurus. Just to worship at the throne of Allosaurus. He is not used to fighting small, more agile opponents. Oh, the constant flashes and the roaring. I'm gonna have a headache by the end of this. Sensory overload just to keep them engaged. You might as well have subway surfers playing on the edge of the screen. Allosaurus is so big, all he cares about is getting his teeth on him. The end of the Allosaurus. 
Shut up. Wars and terror as it stands upright. Blood gushing from the wound. I I thought Ceratosaurus's arms and claws weren't that useful. Huh. Now the fight has changed. It's personal. <laughs> it's personal, guy. It's personal. These dinosaurs are holding a grudge. They they hate each other that much. But I, I thought the Ceratosaurus was primitive. It, it, oh no, now it's personal. Holds a grudge against this Allosaurus. And maybe that smarter Allosaurus can do that from their point of view. But uh, no, it's... They, they hate each other now. The Ceratosaurus now has the perfect opportunity to outflank the Allosaurus. Landing on the side of the Allosaurus. Allosaurus, using his mass, is able to shift and shudder and ultimately throw the Ceratosaurus to the ground. Having the mass of a Ceratosaurus, like just a thousand pounds of land on you, that's gonna hurt. But, uh, this also hurts. This is painful. Ceratosaurus fails to react quickly enough. Clamp down on the shoulder of the Ceratosaurus. The Ceratosaurus... How do you know? Was the shoulder of the Ceratosaurus specimen broken or anything? You haven't, you haven't given any evidence of any of this. ...roars in pain and is able to use its elongated upper teeth to slash the jaw of the Allosaur. The Allosaur... Okay, those upper teeth probably weren't as long as you're saying, but they're just still pretty long. ...will not release its prey. The Allosaurus will not just bite straight down. He will also move- But they don't show that happening. They say that Ceratosaurus can slash at the Allosaurus with its teeth, but it's- In this position, it's too inconceivable. It's not- You're not able to show it. So you're just- You're just making this up. You're, you're contradicting yourself. His jaws side to side to cause slashing wounds. The Ceratosaurus slumps to the ground. And the Allosaurus oh. towers over its How much Ceratosaurus torture do you need to show? <laughs> like, this entire segment of the Allosaurus just thrashing and biting the Ceratosaurus. Right. Allosaurus uses the enormous claws on its feet to disembowel its helpless. Oh, body. now it needs to get disemboweled. Oh, yes. Allosaurus has won the battle and has reclaimed this forest as its own. But this makes no sense with the fossil find that they're talking about. They say they found some herbivores, and they say that a ceratosaurus was found, and then they say 60 yards away an allosaurus was found. All right, so we have one dead allosaurus accounted. Well, sorry, one dead ceratosaurus accounted for. What about the second dead ceratosaurus? Where did the mate come from? And then, the Allosaurus here doesn't die, so where does the Allosaurus come from? What are you talking about? This is nothing like the fossil site that you claim that this is based off of. You would expect to find one dead Ceratosaurus, and one dead Allosaurus, and then some herbivores around there or something. This makes no sense, you just have two dead Ceratosaurus. What? <laughs> Over the next 20 million years, Allosaurus dethroned Ceratosaurus as the most lethal creature on planet Earth. What do you mean over the next 20 million years? They're already at the end of their rope. What, if this is 150 million years ago, they have 4 or 5 million years left to go before the early Cretaceous begins and they go extinct. So, uh, where, how are they going to keep... Being dethroned, dethroning for 20 million years. It was no match against Mother Nature. The end of the Jurassic brought an end to the reign of Allosaurus. Why are you contradicting yourself, Jurassic Fight Club? Pick a story and stick with it. Someday we may find that one spot where that skip of dirt was preserved. It shows what happened in that 20 right. James Kirkland is saying that their extinctions were a mystery, but I thought the Allosaurus literally ate Ceratosaurus to extinction. I, I think they say that in bloodiest battle. So here comes the paleontologist to clean up the mess of uh, these episodes. Doing your gap for now, we don't have it. What are you gonna say? Big animals like Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus are the first to suffer during a dramatic climax. Uh, that's definitely uh, true, because the moment that the food chain starts shaking and. They have, they need a big caloric intake of other animals. The moment that that food chain starts to break down, they start to die. Dick change. 
Because of their sheer size, they require yep. a certain amount of food and a certain amount of water. All right, that's a good point. That's a good point, Dinosaur George. I agree with you there. When the environment changed in the late Jurassic, about 120 million years ago, it really... Did he say late Jurassic 120 million years ago? Again, that was about 146, 145 million years ago when the Jurassic changed into the Cretaceous. So you are 25 million years off, buddy. We cause problems for the bigger animals. They are the ones least able to adapt. Alright, true. Next week. Okay, so. Um, I think the next episode is Biggest Killers, where they go through the different large pods and just talk about how cool they were. And of course, uh, Allosaurus is on that episode. <sighs> I think... Maybe... Let me pull it back. We could end it on a picture of Serat uh, Allosaurus here. Here, there. Ceratosaurus or something. I don't know. There you go. You can see why I hope that... This is my least favorite, I think the worst episode of Jurassic Fight Club. Just just constant inaccuracies, constant inconsistencies with itself. The uh, narrator and George are fighting with the paleontologists, who the paleontologists are trying to promote like, common sense things and ideas, but then uh, the narrator and George and what's being shown are contradicting everything. and every It's fighting with itself. Part of it wants to be factual, and part of it wants to be that awesome bro craziness. Um, it has... They're talking about some good ideas, there's some scientific fact in there. But then it's all just thrown away. Uh, this episode in particular, it's just an unnecessary rehash of Bloodiest Battle. Where they didn't think that they praised Allosaurus enough, or tortured the Ceratosaurus enough. So we have to devote an entire episode, alright, get the same models back. Just come up with some new flimsy story. Got totally irrelevant to the fossil evidence that they're talking about. And just mash something together where Allosaurus kills some Ceratosaurus and uh, just, just battles them and... Uh, yeah, so, and then, oh, well, let's call it an episode. That's it, we did all the writing there, okay, cool. And I really like Ceratosaurus, and it just makes me feel bad watching an animal being tortured and beaten repeatedly. Ceratosaurus did nothing to deserve this. It just seems malicious. Like, you, you can have nature, you can show animals killing each other, and predation, and territory disputes. You can show an Allosaurus kill a Ceratosaurus and not be too disrespectful. Like, uh, when dinosaurs owned America, it wasn't too disrespectful. But they have to just keep showing it over and over and do it again and again. It just seems like they have a real grudge against Ceratosaurus for some reason. When you're making a documentary, you have to treat your subjects with a level of respect. Not You don't go in there to make them look bad or to make them look stupid or not as good as something else. You have to have respect for your subjects and they clearly don't respect Ceratosaurus on any level. Just using it to prop up the Allosaurus, which is just really annoying. Uh, again, Allosaurus is cool. I like Allosaurus too, as much as the next guy, but you don't need to do this. Even even as a kid, as like a nine-year-old child when this came out, I was watching these episodes as they were coming out. I remember I would get home from back-to-school shopping. I Was it a Tuesday or Wednesday when these were coming out? And I'd be excited to see the next episode. I'd, I'd have them recorded on my DVR. I'd go in, back to the TV, watch the latest episode. I, I was a big fan of this series. I was a target audience. Dumb elementary schoolers who kind of like dinosaurs, but... Again, I was an elementary schooler. How much did I know? And you want to see some cool action, whatever. That's the target audience. Target demographic. And even then, this... Episode didn't stick right with me. Just like, like, why, why did they need to have this episode where they just punished this poor creature? Even nine-year-old me was feeling bad about this. Like, what was the point? There was no point. They just need to praise Allosaurus and fill up another episode. You know, there, there are plenty of other cool things in the fossil record to make an episode about. 
Could have done Veloster out there versus Protoceratops, but he chose not to do that. Could have had T-Rex versus Triceratops or Taurosaurus or anything like that. Chose not to do it. Um, Planet Dinosaur did a Carcharodontosaurus Spinosaurus thing. You could have done something like that too, but no, we just had to rehash this. Alright, so in the future, um, look forward to the next Landing for Time part. That'd be part 3, where I review uh, numbers 9. Through 11. I'm gonna keep doing the Dinosauria series and more Paleo myths, and eventually I, I will review uh, Life on Our Planet from Netflix. So, so um, if you enjoyed this video and are looking forward to that future content, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and to check out my social media. See you next time.